Oh, welcome to another broadcast of Business Way Outside the Box, sponsored by PR Works, based in Plymouth, Mass., America's hometown. I'm your host, Steve Dubin. And uh, on a monthly basis, we highlight uh, a business that is way outside the box or conducts business in an unusual way. We have someone with us today who does both of those things. Let me introduce you to Mark Parrish from Crescent Ridge Dairy. Welcome, Mark. Hi, Steve. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, It's a pleasure. So, Mark, uh, I know that you are third generation in uh, the Crescent Ridge business, and um, I know that you've helped morph it into a very different business than it was when your grandfather uh, started it. And maybe you could tell us a, a little bit about that. Well, yes, uh, my, my grandfather and grandmother purchased this farm, this working farm in 1932. And if you put it in context with what's going on in the, in the world today, they, they purchased the farm in the height of the depression. So they had lots of uh, challenges and difficulties and so much to work through in those early years and then through the war. Um, and uh, I, I grew up in the business, uh, loved it as a, as a, as a boy and uh, through school. And um, then when I got out of college in the uh, early 80s, uh, I worked in Chicago for 13 or 14 years and then had been back here where, where my heart has been uh, for 25 years since then. Okay. And, um, you know, you started as a really traditional um, milk and dairy delivery business, correct? Yeah. So um, traditional, you know, milk and dairy, that was kind of exclusively what, what we sold off of our trucks. Um, You know, uh, really from the beginning days with uh, my, with my grandparents and my father and uncle and really in through the seventies and into the eighties. And uh, at that point in the eighties, we began expanding. I wasn't here, but the, um, you know, the the, the family uh, started to broaden, um, you know, some of the offerings that we were providing. Um, It was sort of, I would say convenience uh, was sort of driving, driving the value then. And uh, they they broadened um, a lot of the categories then. So that was really the first time I think that in terms of the delivery business, uh, the items, the, what we were offering had, had changed. And, and Mark, one of the differentiators were, were, well, is that not only did you greatly expand the kinds of things that you deliver, but there's a real focus on sort of farm to truck to table now. And can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah. So I think, you know, in the last um, in the last few years, our customers really we we learned we're, we're looking really for 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 local products. You know, products from the farm, um, not only our own farm, where we started to develop our own um, beef program and uh, pasture raised pork program, and we sort of learned in that process that our customers really wanted a more farm centric uh, base of, of products to offer to them. So we really started to shed what I would call the national brands that we were carrying that really didn't distinguish us or differentiate us. And we, we took really a, a thoughtful sort of careful approach to the kinds of products we were offering. And, and really in the last year and a half, two years, maybe two and a half, um, we've um, really, really expanded upon that with um, really good, really good response from our customers. And, and that ranges from grass-fed beef to, to local cheeses to, to you know, um, local honey, right? Yes, all of that. Um, but as well as, you know, uh, produce shares from Ward's Berry Farm, um, seafood from Red's Best out of Boston Harbor, where there's actually a QR code on, on each of the, their one pound packages that tells the consumer what boat and captain had, had, had taken that local fish. Um, uh, Capone, um, Capone Italian Foods, the Boston Honey Company, 
um, Side Hill Farm, Hearth Bakery, who, who's uh, right out of uh, Plymouth, where, where you are. Um, just many, many that have um, sort of been put into the portfolio, yes. Yeah, well, that's great. And, and so, um, you know, you've had some challenges along the way. What I would like to start with is it's um, somewhat ironic that a pandemic has, you are one of, not that you're a profiteer by any means, because you're a very good community business, but the, the pandemic has really um, awoken people to the fact that um, it is far safer to have good, clean food delivered to you than for you to go and fight your way through a supermarket. Yeah, we were pretty grateful that we were, we were able to, you know, remain in business and, and, and try to, um, you know, take on some of this demand. Um, you know, I, I should say first and foremost, um, you just wouldn't believe what our employees did here particularly in those early days and, and continue to do in terms of being, you know, united as a team, trying to put out the product to the, the, to the, the customers that really needed it. You know, um, you know, it, it, it really was an essential service that allowed so many people to stay home and not risk uh, being out there. But, you know, our people were here and um, I, I couldn't be more proud of what, what I've seen what I've seen uh, in terms of, you know, the humanity to humanity um, statement that they made through their work. Yeah, no, I think you're, and it sort of leads to the, to your, your, your medals and your awards behind your head of um, the kinds of um, validation you've gotten from both the marketplace and from your peers of the kinds of uh, the kind of work you do and the, and the products that you uh, produce and deliver. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the awards that you have won? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, so last year we um, put out uh, 10 products to the World Dairy Expo. The World Dairy Expo has been around for about 50 years. It's an international expo in Wisconsin. And our 10 products were among uh, many thousands of products across 27 categories that had been submitted. And we came away with four first place awards across those 27 categories for both our milk and our ice cream. And it was a, it was a, a great team achievement, a great company achievement. And as you say, it, it, it validated what we always knew in terms of the the quality and consistency of the product, but we're um, we're um, we're pretty proud of it, and um, um, so some of them are, are are here behind me. Well, congratulations uh, on on all of that. Uh, going back to uh, the pandemic and and a lot of the growth you've seen, uh, what are some of your near future plans to to expand and uh, and reach more customers. Yeah, in terms of delivery, um, really yeah. what, what we're what we're bumping up against is um, you know assets. In other words, you know trucks and uh, and uh, and some employees. So we need well, we have a couple. We have two trucks that should be arriving within within the next week or two, and then another two that should be coming in late fall, which will allow us to open up uh, more more delivery routes. Uh, we do unfortunately have a, a, a waiting list of customers. We, we'd like to be able to um, you know, serve as many as we can. Uh, and uh, so getting, getting more trucks in first is, is really the first, uh, uh, the first order of business. Um, and and uh, your footprint of where you currently service? Uh, the easiest way to describe it is uh, inside the 495 belt. So, um, Okay. And, um, and you have um, a creamery, an ice cream stand um, on your, uh, connected to your farm. Uh, and I know that most people have these great childhood and family memories of that. Um, how is that doing and, and what are the future plans for potential expansion there as well? 
Well, um, that retail model has changed so much as everyone, as everyone knows, um, the model of retail in the COVID era. So where we were used to having, you know, crowds and throngs of people packed shoulder to shoulder at the windows and, um, you know, lining up at the fences and, and uh, tables to, to watch the cows in the, in the nice setting, we're, you know, we're not able to provide that right now. Um, so, you know, that business is, is challenged because of that. And what, what we've done to adapt is we have what I would call an old style car hop service. So the, uh, the customers come in their cars in, in the rear parking lot, and then they're directed to one of four lanes in the front. And uh, our server comes out to their window. Uh, they, they were given a menu when they enter. And um, so they, they, they tell the server what they want off the menu. And that's communicated inside to the, to the dairy bar where the order is filled. And then a runner brings the order out to their car and uh, off they go. So um, we've been operating under that model for the last uh, 10 days or so. You know, in, the, in a couple of months prior, there were, you know, there were a couple of other models. We were closed for um, you know, two and a half, three weeks until we could really evaluate how we could operate in a safe manner you know, for our young employees who were there and, and for the public. And then we were open um, only for curbside service where customers would email or call their orders in. And now we've expanded to full scooping of all of our products. And it's in this, um, you know, car hop, you know, drive up uh, type scenario. And then, uh, you know, we do have a retail location in Boston at the Boston Public Market. Uh, that market has remained closed. Um, you know, there have been conversations about at what phase it, it might be reopened and, um, you know, uh, among the, <clears throat> the governors and the, and, um, the mayor's um, plans. And then we'll, um, you know, hopefully get that open sometime this summer. Okay. Yeah. And one of my questions is, I think, um, you know, I, I had shared with you earlier, I had a misconception that um, your delivery service in particular might really appeal to um, higher end households, gourmets, um, uh, the more affluent. Can you really give me a better sense of um, your, your target customer? Yeah, I, I, I think that is a misconception. You know, I mean, our, our customers really care deeply about, you know, the quality of the food that they're consuming, what, you know, who they're buying it from, you know, knowing their, their farmer, knowing the, the other local groups. And um, it, it's more a matter of, 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 of quality um, and, and knowing that it's wholesome and local and not part of the, you know, the, the, the national international you know agribusiness um i think there's more trust there so it's it's um it's not really you know income based it, it's really i would say you know food and local based in terms of who our core customer is okay um and um lastly for those who want to potentially um get delivery service from you or visit the the um, you know your dairy bar. Um, why don't you give us your address for the dairy bar, and then maybe your website for people to look at the full complement of your menu. Oh, great! Um, so the the dairy bar address is four zero seven Bay Road in Sharon, uh, Sharon, Mass. Our website is crescentridge.com. Uh, it, it has a uh, really all the information you need to know about um, both businesses, you know, retail ice cream and our delivery businesses. Uh, I should also say that we're in 200 grocery stores in, um, in, uh, in the Boston area. If you happen to be shopping uh, at the grocery store, you can find our glass bottled milk there and, and know that it came from Crescent Ridge. Well, thanks, Mark. Uh, as uh, someone who's um, addicted to your ice cream, um, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. And it's always an, it's always a pleasure to visit the farm too and, and get some ice cream. Uh, I want to thank you for being on our podcast today uh, and close by saying this has been business way outside the box, uh, sponsored by PR Works. 
if you feel your business is way outside the box in any in any way, whether it has an, you have an unusual business model or you conduct business in an unusual way, please contact me at prworkzone.com and we would love to consider having you on the show. Mark, you, thank you so much for being with us today. Steve, great seeing you again.